Darling from your nation, how are you? How are we? Today's episode is so exciting because I have, for the first time in quite a long time, a special guest from New York. He is a professor as well as a lawyer, Dmitry Shakenvich, is gracing us with his presence. I'm going to log on and we are going to be able to see him and talk about Shankwella Robinson. We're going to talk about the case. Why is it stalling? Why has nobody been arrested yet? What is going on? What about the extradition to Mexico? Will there be an extradition to Mexico? Is it possible to have an extradition to Mexico? What is Mexico doing? What is the USA doing? I have not been able to rest since I heard this case, since I followed this case. And I said to myself, Fumi, you know what? You need to do a little bit more right here. You need to find out what is going on. And I was so honored that Dimitri reached out to me and said, Fumi, you know what? Let me come onto your channel. I see your passion for this case. And let me try and answer some questions for you and Fumi Nation. So without a beat, my darlings, let me introduce to you Dmitry Shakenvich, an amazing lawyer and professor from New York who has been on CBS in relation to Shankwella Robinson. I will just run the video for you guys to see. We have a very disturbing story about the death of a young American woman in Mexico and the search for answers from the people she was traveling with, people she says or thought were her friends. Shanquella Robinson died last month at a resort near Cabo San Lucas. Now Mexican prosecutors are trying to get an unnamed American woman extradited to Mexico to face the charges. They say that Robinson was killed in a, quote, direct attack, not an accident. Lilia Luciano is following this investigation. Lilia, good morning. This story is so disturbing on so many levels. It really is. Good morning to you all. Well, Shanquilla Robinson traveled with six friends to Mexico. Some of those friends initially told Robinson's parents that she died of alcohol poisoning, but her death certificate later listed her cause of death as a spinal cord and neck injury. Robinson's father told us if it weren't for the disturbing videos that emerged, including one where she's being brutally attacked, he fears justice would have never been served. She was just a very, you know, outgoing person. I mean, she loved people, just loved the friends that she was around. Shankula Robinson's father says his daughter's friends are to blame for the 25-year-old's death at a resort in Mexico in late October. Days after her death, a video too disturbing to show went viral, showing a woman beating Robinson, who was naked and not fighting back, while other friends watched and filmed nearby. My daughter, she suffered, man. The last breath she took, she suffered. And they sit there and watch. A local police report shows friends called for medical help just after 2 p.m., saying Robinson had, quote, drunk a lot of alcohol. When the doctor arrived and suggested she be taken to a hospital, she told police Robinson's friends refused and insisted on keeping her at the resort. Mr. Robinson says her friends called Shanquilla's mother that night to say she was being treated for alcohol poisoning. An autopsy report released days later states Robinson died of a severe spinal cord injury and neck trauma at around 3 p.m. After her death, all six friends returned to the United States. Mexican authorities are now seeking the extradition of a single female suspect. John Jay College law professor Dmitry Shaknovich says the process now lies in the hands of the U.S. justice system. They will engage in their own due process to see if this person that is alleged to have committed a crime should be extradited. What do you want to see happen? I want the truth, man. I just want them to get back over there and tell the Mexican authorities why they did what they did. I can't even be a grandfather. I can't even walk down the aisle, man. The only thing I can do is cherish the moments that we had the 25 years while she was here on this earth. 
His only child. Robinson's death is being investigated by Mexican authorities as a femicide or the killing of a woman because of her gender. The FBI has said that they have opened an investigation into the death as well. And at this hour, it remains unclear whether those who witnessed the fight may also be in legal jeopardy. I hope they are. I, I saw the video for the first time. My niece showed it Disturbing. to me. Over vacation. It is so upsetting. And you can hear them yelling at her saying, fight back, fight yeah. back. If the arrest warrant is for the woman who we see in the video, she needs to be sent over to Mexico sooner rather than later. It's so outrageous. And I think Dad is right. If it wasn't for that video, right. they might have gotten away with the story that they initially told. Yeah. That was the concern. He says, you know, if, if these videos hadn't come, come out, he fears that, you know, the story that these friends yes. had, that this happened because of alcohol poisoning, which he says they insisted, and some of those friends came to the mother's house, mm -hmm. to her family. Well, and told that same that, story. Told, told that the same story, story until the videos came out and then everybody shut down their social media, disappeared and hmm. had been silent. It's ever just since. Wow. I hope yeah. the U.S. acts on this. Yeah, oh, justice is You should is not served. get away with this. Exactly. Sure. Thank you so much. I'm going to put all of the links down below. I'm going to put the links also in this episode. He's following this case and he has assured me, he said for me, listen, once it goes to court, then game on, we move. Without any further ado, my darling from your nation, let me introduce to you Dimitri Shakinvich. It's such a pleasure to meet you. Happy holidays. <laughs> thank you, thank you, and same to you. Such a pleasure to meet you. So let me start. Um, hello, darling Fumi Nation. How are you? How are we? I have an amazing guest today, a special guest, all the way from, from New York City. He is a professor as well as a lawyer. He's also on YouTube. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put all of his links down below and inside this video. You have to follow him also on YouTube. But before I start, I want to recite a short bio about our special guest. Dmitry Shaknevich represents clients in criminal cases and matters in civil litigation. He is the founder of the law firm of Dmitry Shakenvich, based in downtown Manhattan, and adjunct assistant professor at John Lay College of Criminal Justice. Dmitry has worked on matters across the United States, but is a full-time member of the bars of New York State and the state of New Jersey, where he is admitted to practice in state and federal courts. He is a graduate of New York Law School and Brooklyn College of the City of University of New York. Dimitri has authored articles published in Bloomberg Law, Ethisphere Magazine, and Law 360, and has been consistently selected to Super Lawyers Magazine for New York City area. Dimitri resides in New York. It is such an honor to have you, sir. And we are so delighted, Fumi Nation, that you are here to give us an insight on the case of Shanquella Robinson. Can you kindly take the floor and introduce yourself to Fumi Nation? Because I know that they will want to get in touch with you <laughs> with their own personal cases in New York. Please take the floor. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you for that kind introduction. I hope that nobody, none of your listeners need me ever. I <laughs> hope they only watch my videos for leisurely purposes and yes. no other purposes. And I hope they only reach out to me for leisurely purposes yes. and no other purposes. <laughs> that being said, uh, as you mentioned, I'm a lawyer here in New York. I do criminal cases. I do some civil cases. And I teach at John Jay College of Criminal Justice, which is one of the top criminal justice colleges in the country here yes. in Midtown Manhattan. Um, and I represent clients every day of my life. Uh, and, and I'm on YouTube now and Instagram and LinkedIn and Twitter yes. and all that other stuff. Um, and so here I am. Well, it is such a pleasure to have you. And might I add, Fumi Nation, that Dimitri was also, I think, was it ABC News? You were on the national news covering or contributing your expertise in the Shanquilla Robinson case. Guys, I'm going to put the link down for you below because it's also important for you to see how much of an influence Dimitri is giving to this case. And it is such an honor because we are stumped, Dimitri. We are stumped. I am stumped. I want and I humbly ask you because I have my list here. 
What is going on? Why have the Kabul six not been arrested? What is it that we don't know? Is it something we don't know that's going on? Whenever you have two countries that have to coordinate a criminal case, there's going to be time issues, right? There will be delays, right? Right now, we are at the extradition stage, right? Or at least we will be hopefully soon, right? This happened in Mexico. Mexico and the U.S. have a treaty between one another that basically says that if somebody commits a crime in one country, we engage in a process to request that the person who presumably left to the other country is sent back, right? That's what extradition is. Yes. Mexico initiated that process. Uh, once you go to the U.S., the federal authorities, it's typically the FBI, will be tasked with investigating and detaining uh, the folks that are sought to be extradited, okay? Correct. Correct. Once that happens, there's a federal case in federal court that's initiated to substantiate the extradition effectively. If that's done, the case will go to the State Department, right, the Secretary of State, and if extradition is ultimately approved, then the person is sent back. That's a process that may take months or years. Um, oh, wow. And, 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 and it's taking a while here. So that means that nobody is walking free anywhere. No, that doesn't mean that. We don't know much, right? Because the federal authorities keep everything under wraps when they investigate, yes. right? Federal authorities here in the U.S. do a very good job of investigating, coordinating, uh, being careful with what they find, crossing their T's and dotting their I's. The public isn't privy to any of that information. In this case, even the family is, is complaining, right, that they're not being kept apprised of everything. Um, and that's by design, right? The FBI is making sure, the federal authorities are making sure that they do everything by the book and limit outside influences that may stand in their way. So the couple six, because I am hearing through the grapevine that some of them are even hiding in plain sight. Translation, they are actually at work. They are going to work. They are living their normal lives. That does not mean that nothing has changed. The FBI is looking at them and when they are ready to pounce the wheel. Correct. In some cases, right, there is something called the provisional arrest. Correct. Where the country seeking extradition says these people are a risk of flight. And so we need them detained right away. Yes. Pending the extradition. Correct. Uh, that doesn't happen often. That only happens where there's a risk of flight. Um, I don't know that there's a risk of flight here. At least that hasn't been uh, conclusively determined. So yeah. we're in this weird gray area. Fumination. Basically, what Dimitri is saying is that because this crime was committed in Mexico, that is where really they'll have to start. So they have to get the Cabo Six back to Mexico before they are even tried or anything in the US of A. And that is where the time now is passing. This is where we have to sit tight and gain confidence that things will take place, but not as fast as we want it to. Not as fast. They're going to take their time to double check and make sure that nobody gets away. And in so doing, we just have to sit tight for them to double proof everything, basically. Well, the case will go to a federal court here in the U.S., right, before they are extradited. Now, that federal case isn't a U.S. federal case. It's not like it's going to go to a jury and no. a prosecution has to prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt. No. There are hearings um, that are effectively probable cause hearings, very low standard legal hearings. Um, so more often than not, where there is a treaty between two countries and extradition is sought pursuant to that treaty, extradition will more often than not take place, almost always. So what happens now if the Kabul Six now start to have lawyers, the lawyer up? Will they still be extradited or will these lawyers prevent them from going to Mexico to face charges? Well, the way that this will start in court is there will be a bail hearing, yes. right? Um, generally speaking, in extradition cases, bail is denied, right? Yes. Because extradition is by definition a flight risk, right? Yes. The whole reason somebody's being extradited is because they left. So yes. bail yes. is typically denied, right? 
Then there's an evidentiary hearing, a probable cause hearing, which is a very low standard, and federal prosecutors often meet that burden quite easily. Then there's an appellate process, which is here in the States called a habeas corpus process. Yes. And if all of those check marks are checked off, then it'll go to the executive branch of the State Department okay, uh, so that will right. approve mm-hmm. the extradition. Now, of course, they will have lawyers. They're entitled to lawyers. Um, but, you know, that doesn't mean that the lawyers will prevent the extradition. Uh, extraditions, again, more often than not, uh, come to pass. Okay. Um, one of the Cabo Six, I, I won't mention his name, but his mother put out that the FBI had come to question himself and the son, herself and her son. Is that true? Do you think that the FBI would, would have questioned any members of the Cabo Six individually? Is that a possibility? Absolutely. And would they have written him off and said that he's no threat and that he's off the case? Not necessarily. Right now, that doesn't mean they're going to arrest him right away. Right? But uh-huh. they Questioning a witness is the bread and butter of an investigation like this, right? You question witnesses, you question people that were involved, you gather video evidence, right? That's all part of the investigation and the feds investigate better than anybody. So because the FBI questioned him does not mean that he's innocent, does not mean that the case is closed. No, not at all. I mean, if anything, it could mean the opposite, right? But it may not, we just don't know yet. Okay, all right. Thank you for that. Where do we go from here in the sense that everybody is sitting and waiting? People are crying out for justice. Of course, we've got the courts, but we also have street justice. The best advice is just to sit and wait. This is going to take much longer than expected because there are two countries involved. Which is tough and people have a hard time doing that and the world kind of exploded because of this case. And it's a horrible case, it's understandable, right? Um, We are here a country of laws, no street justice, no vigilante justice, none of that stuff will fly. um, And none of that stuff should even be thought about. Um, But patience is a virtue, right? As they say, patience is the answer here. But the federal authorities do a great job of investigating cases right? They are complete, they are comprehensive, they are diligent, they are careful. Um, And so it's in the hands of the federal authorities. And that is a good thing as it relates to bringing folks to justice that should be brought to justice. Okay, let me ask you, did you watch the video? I did. From what you watched, would you say that it's fair to bring those people in at the very minimum for questioning, including the person that was filming it. All witnesses should be questioned. All witnesses, all witnesses. Um, And they will be, I assure you, to the extent that they could be found, be questioned, absolutely. Like in any crime, right? Yes, including the maid Lucy, who found the body, including the people that wrote, because because there has been a lot of controversy about the police report and the autopsy. The autopsy said one thing. The autopsy showed us what the body told us. The police report, it has been circulating, that it's it's terribly inaccurate, that, she did, that there was no alcohol in her system. The, the autopsy let us know that the police report was, was wrong. The police report said that she had that she died of alcohol poisoning, but there was no alcohol in the autopsy. So who wrote this report? Who signed off on this report? Who were the people, the emergency that came there? Who were the people that wrote all of this? They are all going to be questioned when the time comes? So much of that is up to the Mexican authority, right? The substantive criminal case, mm-hmm. right? Not extradition that's going to happen in the U.S. The substantive criminal case where they will stand trial is in Mexico. That will be up to the Mexican authorities, to the Mexican investigators, to the Mexican prosecutors, right? Because they have to build the case, right? The U.S. just has to send them over there, right? The Mexican authorities have to build the case. 
they have to, um, at some point, prove something. So they should certainly, and presumably they are, investigating the case and interviewing all of these witnesses uh, and making sure that certain things are consistent and if they are inconsistent, why? Let me ask you this. They, from the American side, they're diligent, they're efficient. They will get them to Mexico. I know money speaks, money talks. If it's in the hands of the Mexicans, will they do a thorough job with this case? Look, that's a tough question. That's not a legal question, right? That's more of a political kind of question. Uh -huh. um, you would hope not, right? The idea of a treaty between two countries is because the U.S. doesn't have a treaty with all countries, right? Yes. The idea of a treaty is that one country recognizes the criminal laws and processes of another, right? Oh, right. The presumption is that Mexico is going to do stuff by the book. Now, you hear things from yes. folks, and who knows? Let's hope there's no corruption involved. Correct. Uh, there's no foul play involved. Oh, Dimitri, with your experience, I humbly I'm, ask. I'm a lawyer here in the U.S. In the U.S., my experience is that things are done absent corruption, absent foul play. Uh, I am not a lawyer in Mexico yet. We'll see. Um, and when, you know, when a case is brought in Mexico, it, nobody knows. It's a political issue. That nobody this, case knows. Is, this case is big. There's going to be a lot of pressure. Mexico already knows they have all eyes on them. This right. is a big case. But that can cut both ways, right? That could force them to really play it by the book, right? Because they know that the eyes of the world are on them as it relates to this case. Wow. Wow. Right? Yes. One way of looking at it. Thank you so very, very much, Dimitri. Ladies and gentlemen, Fubi Nation, we humbly ask Dimitri to come as a special guest once they are extradited to Mexico so that we can follow the case as it unfolds and evolves. Thank you so very much for your time. <laughs> we are so very grateful. And is there anything else that you can add to this case as of now? How did you hear about beautiful Shanquilla? Because for me, I heard through Fumi Nation and I, I, I have a personal, I, 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 I take this case very personally. I just can't let it go. I've tried to let it go. I can't. And I don't want to let it go. I feel there has to be justice for this girl. There has to be justice for her family. It, it's, it, it, if we let this, if I let this, if I let this case go, what does it say about me? The answer, unfortunately, is patience. That is the answer. Um, it's, it's a tough pill to swallow, right? And, and I get it. I mean, I, I get it. It's because I see the comments, right? I was, uh, somebody reached out to me from CBS um, uh, through John Jay, where I teach. And yes. asked me to talk about this case. And I went on CBS mornings and I talked about this case. And the out, you know, I heard about it, obviously, prior to then. Yes. But the response and the outcry was unlike anything I've seen uh, in a long, long, long time, people are passionate about this case. People are concerned about this case. People are thinking about this case. And there's a reason for it. There's a good reason for it. And the hope and the presumption is that the American authorities will do their job. Yes. And the Mexican authorities will do their job. That's what we have to rely on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dimitri. So, guys... It's patience. It is patience. We will just have to wait. We have to keep the story alive. I'll keep the story alive on my channel. Might I add, a lot of fumination also said, what about the mainstream news outlets? What, I, we want this story, we want this to be on national news, constantly still being kept alive. Do we just continue to keep updates on everything and anything we have to apply pressure for the national networks to keep the story alive? Or do you think once they get them extradited, then we start to swing, then we move? 
once more becomes public, it will yes. become public, right? Once we get into the courts, the courts are a public forum, and okay. more information will come to light. And that is when uh, the major news outlets will, will, will get on this even more. They've been uh, vigilant so far. And as the process continues, that will escalate. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you, Dimitri. <laughs> I so feel much. good. <laughs> I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you so very much for your time. And might I humbly request that you please come back when the case gets to the courts. Absolutely. I'm Have here. A, thank you, know you very much. <laughs> thank you so much, Dimitri. Thank you. Appreciate thank you. it. And that's it for me, Nation. That is it for this episode. We have listened to what Dimitri has to say. And might I add that all of his links are below. All of links are in this episode right here. Follow his YouTube channel because he has all the cases. You'll be following this. And we will see you when? We will see you sooner than later. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you. Nation. <laughs>